The next piece of this is why it is that sovereignty is so important. So the first thing is to realize that the situation that the colonists found themselves in, so this, the entire democratic thing goes back to the American colonies all around the world. I mean, the French, the, the philosophical basis for it was developed in the Enlightenment. Um, but nobody did it until the colonists did. There was no, you have to go back to Greece when they, you know, when, the, uh, when, that, for, when that idea first happened and it disappeared with the church in the Middle Ages and we can talk about the history if we want to, but the situation that the colonists were in is very, very instructive. Uh, it takes months for a ship to get from England to the colonies or from the colonies back to, to England. And the idea of a colony, when you're, when you're the English settling or setting up a colony in uh, America, is that the colony is going to serve you. It's, <laughs> it's going to bring you raw materials and wealth and you know gold and silver maybe or furs or whatever it is. That, that uh, you've done the colony for, cotton from the south, what have you. And if you look at the Industrial Revolution in England, where, where it really started, it was based on cheap cotton from the south. So there's an uh, a attitude of the mother country to the colonies, and there's an attitude in the colonies toward the mother, co towards the mother country, towards the king. So Americans experienced that they were British, basically, and that they owed their allegiance to the king. And part of their allegiance to the king was to what we know as common law. So uh, the citizens have rights, even though the king is still the king and gets to decide at the end of the day. Well, the king violated the basic rights of the colonists. And I'll tell you a little story that will make this clear. Uh, Benjamin Franklin, Thomas Jefferson, a few of the others were very interested in the Iroquois nation. The Iroquois had enjoyed a thousand years of peace. They were obviously very civilized, if, if primitive. They didn't have steel. They didn't have horses. They didn't have domesticated dogs uh, or animals. They didn't. They had no horses, they had no domesticated animals, they had no steel. But they had a very sophisticated society. And uh, Benjamin Franklin in particular was very admiring of the Iroquois, and he learned some Iroquois language in Mohawk. And he went to uh, a powwow, and the Indian chief, the uh, Iroquois chief, had learned some English. And the Iroquois chief was very, this is before, uh, at the very beginning of the French and Indian Wars, before the, the real battle was going on, it's in the 1730s uh, or so, 20, late 1720s. Anyway, Benjamin Franklin went to a Indian power and uh, he came to appreciate these, what we call the separation of powers. So in the Iroquois nation, um, the powers are very clearly separated. The men do this thing, and the women do this thing. And, they, and they, there's no mixing. You know? The men are the men, and the women are the women. And the grandmothers, the grandmothers are responsible for choosing the chiefs, the leaders, the men who are going to lead the tribe. <laughs> They choose the chief of the clan, they choose the chief of the tribe, and they choose the chief of the nation. They sit together, and what they're looking for is the capacity of an individual to embody the common good of the tribe, or to be able to interpret the great spirit. And the, uh, the method of doing that is that the chief listens either in a, uh, a regular sort of powwow, or if it's in a, around a more sacred issue, around in the sweat lodge. The chief listens, 
And everybody, this is the talking stick, right? Everybody gets to speak. And what the chief is doing is listening until he can divine the will of the tribe or the will of the spirit. Benjamin Franklin was appreciating this. And he was thinking, yes, that's absolutely right. What we need to do is divide the powers. We need to divide the powers. That's the American contribution, the colonial contribution to the whole idea of uh, democracy. We are the only government set up with independent branches with uh, division of powers. England is uh, the ruling party, assigns the ministers from among the elected uh, uh, MPs, members of parliament. It's very different. The parliamentary system is very different. So during that uh, time, when the Indian received a knife or a domesticated dog or a horse from a colonist, the Indian would make him a wampum belt or a wampum hairpiece in order to commemorate and acknowledge the gift. So here's the dog and here comes the wampum. So it certainly looks to the colonists like money. He just got paid. He did. The wampum is to commemorate and be able to remember the significance of the gift. All right. This is really important, so I hope you're all with me. <clears throat> While Benjamin Franklin is at this powwow, this brave comes in laden down with wampum. Wampum is this purple, um, this uh, quahog shell, and the little bit of the inside is purple, and most of it is white. So a white wampum is uh, one sort of value, and purple is at least ten times as much. So he comes laden down with wampum, and he gives it to the chief, and the chief starts distributing it to the chiefs of the, of the um, tribes. And the chiefs of the tr tribes distribute it to the chiefs of the clan. And Benjamin Franklin's watching all this happen, and he's got a real quizzical look on his face, right? What's going on here? And the chief recognizes the problem, and he says to Benjamin Franklin, that wampum is not money. Wampum is what we use in order to remember all the significant events that happen in the course of the year and all the gifts that we give to each other, the treaties that we make, the agreements that we make, the births and the deaths, all of the significant things that happen. And there is a, uh, a, a protocol for how to make the memento so that it serves as a mnemonic, as a remembrance. And Benjamin Franklin is taking this in and then the chief says, it's my responsibility to make sure that there's enough wampum in my nation for everybody to make the mementos to commemorate all the important events. He's responsible for that. And Benjamin Franklin goes, oh my God, of course. There always has to be enough money for all the transactions that people want to make. Mm -hmm. There always has to be enough money for all the transactions that people want to make. That's what the sovereign does. The sovereign makes sure that there's enough money for all the transactions that people want to make. He wrote a paper called The Utility and Necessity of a Paper Currency. And it spread like wildfire through the colonies, and all of the colonies started issuing what they called colonial scrip. 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 Paper money. Every colony did it differently. Massachusetts had a little bit of a problem. They kept trying to issue more than was justified. But Pennsylvania didn't. So the consequence was that from around 1730 to around 1760, the colonies were incredibly prosperous. The colonial um, economy grew from practically nothing 
to rival England. And so Benjamin Franklin is in England to uh, represent the colonies, and he's absolutely dismayed because there are poor houses and almshouses, and they're sending debtors to Australia, and uh, I mean, he's just aghast. And he says to uh, and his friends who have um, invited him, I don't understand this. And so they explain to him that there's a population explosion and there's not enough work for everybody. You know, Malthus has been talking about the you know, the problem of scarcity and the overpopulation and all that stuff. So it sounds familiar. Anyway, mm -hmm. so Benjamin Franklin goes, What are you talking about? How could there be too many people and not enough work? That's stupid. He doesn't quite say it like that. What he actually says is in the colonies, everyone is, a, is prosperous and of high moral character. We have no, um, no poor people. Your problem is not that you have too many people and too little work. Your problem is that you have the Bank of England and a debt-based monetary system. Mm -hmm. In the colonies, we issue the money in proper proportion so that it passes easily from the producer to the consumer. But here in England, you all your money is issued as debt, bearing interest, and there is never enough uh, money to satisfy uh, the demand of the people. So, they got all excited about this because it made so much sense, and they drank Benjamin Franklin off to Parliament, and he told Parliament all about it, the result of which was that Parliament banned colonial script, and King George said, cut it out, you got to pay in English coin, gold and silver coin, which you can't get because it comes from England. As soon as it gets here from England, it gets sent back to England to buy glass and copper and you know, all that <laughs> stuff, right? I mean, it's all plus. Mm -hmm. That's why the colonies re rebelled, because the king had taken away what they then understood was their actual sovereignty. It's up to the sovereign to make sure that the people have enough money for all the transactions that they want to make, for the things that are actually in demand. So, as Benjamin Franklin said, it wasn't a little tax on tea. It was the king depriving the colonies of their sovereignty that was the cause of the American Revolution, of the Revolution. Now that's really, really important. I hope you're all very impressed because it's so clear. I mean, it really is so clear. So if we, I mean, us, we the people, guess what? If we are ever going to be sovereign and if we're ever going to create a society that's a reflection of who we are, guess what we're going to need to do? Flower power the American dollar. Issue the power. money. Yes. Okay, so that was seven minutes, I hope. Rock so, a little more. Not bad. The people's <laughs> meant. <laughs> All right. What? The people's meant. Yeah. Okay, so how do we do this? This is kind of impossible, isn't it? I mean, after all, uh, if you just issue money, what are you going to do? I mean, who's going to take it? 